Alrighty guys, we are back from camping. Uh, I wanna get started on the smoked trout dip recipe. So the first step is to brine our trout. We have all of the trout ready to go. Uh, we're doing a really simple brine, which is basically one gallon of water and then one half cup of both kosher salt and dark brown sugar. We're gonna go ahead and mix the brown sugar and salt in warm water, so just so it dissolves a little easier. So let's do that now. So I'm just gonna heat this up. It's a little already hot water. Um, I'm gonna let it get a little warmer. Now what I'm gonna do is just slowly add the sugar, or salt rather. I'm gonna slowly add the salt. I'm gonna dump all the salt in. I'm gonna just be mixing as we add everything just so it stays, you know, so it dissolves faster. Put all that brown sugar in there. Now you want to brine in cold water, so what, we, what we're going to do is take some ice. We want to cool it down as much as possible. So this isn't much of the two gallons, but it is going to raise the temperature a little bit, which is why we want the ice in there. This is all dissolved, so we're going to move it into the uh, big tray now. So it doesn't need a boil or anything. We're strictly doing that to help it dissolve into the liquid easier. So now we're gonna stir this. So we're gonna mix this up, just make sure that uh, that two cups gets mixed in with the rest of the gallon. And that looks good. Now we're gonna put a little bit of garlic in here, which is garlic granules. And we're just gonna sprinkle a good amount in. Doesn't have to be measured. Just uh, if you like garlic, you know, put some garlic in there. Mix that in. So let's put the ice cubes in now. And this is gonna go in the fridge, so make sure you have space in the fridge ready for this. Now, let's start putting the trout in. So we got our fresh caught trout this weekend. We're just gonna start with one bag. And we wanna get as many in here as we can, but we also wanna make sure that they're all completely covered in the brine. And this is gonna be an eight hour brine. It's a really good looking trout. Really, really good set of trout here. We did good this weekend. This is gonna sit in the fridge for eight hours. So in eight hours, we'll come back and we'll start the next step. All right, so it's been eight plus hours of brining and now it's time for the next step, which we need to take the fish out of the brine, uh, rinse it off in cold water, and then pat it dry. Go ahead and rinse these off. You don't need to rub them or anything, just give them a good rinse. Shake the remaining water, get these last few over there. Now we take all of the fish, over to our drying station. Now all we do is take some paper towels and pat these dry. I'm gonna do this one first. And then get the inside dry. And we want to use these toothpicks or skewers to open up the body cavity to make sure that smoke can get in there. There we go, just so it stays wedged in there good. And then we just set them out dry. So again, just pat these down, get the, uh, the inside cavity there. Get a skewer, probably cut this one in half, see if that'll work. That looks like it should work great. So what we're doing, or why we're doing this, is because over that hour or so, the fish will form what's called the pellicle. And essentially it's just this like waxy looking coating all over it. And that helps the smoke absorb into it basically. So we want that pellicle because it will help the fish retain that nice smoky flavor. And that works great. So next step is, uh, it's gonna be on the grill, so stay tuned. And we'll, uh, we'll get these fish onto the grill to start smoking. 
All right, you guys, so it's been about an hour that we've let it sit after we took it out of the brine and dried it. You can see inside, it's kind of got that waxy sheen, and that's the pellicle that we were talking about earlier. So now it's ready to go onto the grill. And these all look good. So we want to preheat your, your smoker to about 180, um, whether it's, you know, a Traeger like a pellet grill like this, or if it's a regular smoker, you want to make the end result be about 180 degrees. And that's the temperature we're going to smoke it at for the entire three to four hours. So let's get these on here. Set them down there. We're going to maximize our space here. After about three hours, we'll be checking on the fish, make sure they, they're, uh, they're cooking well, make sure they're not overcooking. We'll show you how to check and make sure if they're done or not. But yeah, guys, uh, we'll see you in a couple hours. So it's been about three and a half hours. We want to make sure that we aren't overcooking these, so we want to check on them. And to do so, we want to use just the fork, and we want to make sure that they're flaking well and that they aren't translucent. So let's take a look. We're going to pick a thin one and a thick one. And all we want to do, I'm going to choose this one first, is down here at the thickest part here, you just want to basically peel it and make sure it's flaking nice and this is flaking really good. We want to make sure that it looks um, opaque and if you see any translucent in there that means it's not done yet. Let's check another thin one too. I'm gonna throw these bones out. So let's try, this guy's pretty small so let's turn him around but we just want to peel a little bit here. Make sure, oh yeah, that flakes away from the meat real nice. So these ones actually look like they're pretty much done. I'm going to check one more thing. I'm going to check on this this back part. So there's the the part of the meat that we checked a second ago, which is kind of in the body cavity, and then there's this back part that's up up above the that. So what I'm going to do is peel back this skin. And we're going to be shredding this up anyway. You can see that meat looks really good. And then it should just, oh yeah, that's perfect. It should just flake off like that. But no translucent meat. It's just peeling, like look at this. It's just peeling like perfectly, layer after layer. So this is definitely done. So our fish are done. We need to take them off the grill and cool them off before we can peel them apart. Plus we have another, another batch. So we're gonna wait until all of the fish are done before we start deboning them. But uh, here we are, we're gonna take them off the grill here, put them in a container that, ow probably use an oven mitt or some other tool to help with this. So yep, yeah, got these all off the grill. We're gonna put them into the fridge so they can cool off and we can actually uh, take the bones out. And we have batch number two that is still brining. This is gonna be up to smoke in five or six hours. Mm -hmm. So in five or six hours, we're gonna take these out again, just like the last one. And tomorrow we're gonna have them all cooled off, ready to go, and we'll debone them and actually make our cream cheese dip. All right, stay tuned and we'll be back. We'll be back with the next step later. So for this second batch, we're gonna try something a little different. Uh, we're gonna try to butterfly the trout before we put them in the smoker, actually while they're forming the pellicle. So we have all these brined, and we just kind of learn how to butterfly these properly, or at least properly. That's uh, one nice butterfly fillet. Ta-da! So this is the last and by far the most tedious step before we actually put the recipe together. Uh, depending on how sensitive the people you're making uh, this dip for our two pin bones. You might want to go through uh, the trout that you smoked and take out all the pin bones. Obviously the rib bones are gonna need to come out. Those are pretty big and uh, that would bother most people. But the pin bones along the upper side of the fish, uh, this part on the top side, some people are bothered by them, other people not so much. And it's just a matter of like taking the skin off, getting the meat out, and then working your way 
down. So the, the two sections, the rib cage and the top part will come off separately. And then it's just a matter of kind of digging through, uh, you know, one at a time and um, peeling out those, those pin bones. And uh, as you can see, it's gonna be really tedious because there's a ton of them in here, just like that. If you're not sensitive to that, if it doesn't bother you, I mean, you're more than welcome to leave them in. They're not gonna hurt you or anything. Some people just don't like eating pin bones and we're trying to make sure that they're not gonna find any. Uh, I would say you should definitely go with this, the second way that we did it and, and, and butterfly the trout instead of smoking them like this and then picking out the pin bones. It's gonna save you a ton of time. Uh, the smoke seemed to actually saturate a little better in those ones too, so they're a little more smoky than these first fish. We're gonna go ahead and pick through all of these, get most of the pin bones out, and or when we see you again, we'll have the actual recipe where we'll be putting together the dip finally, and I'm excited. So stay tuned for that. Alrighty guys, we are finally at the final step of this whole process, getting all the ingredients together and actually mixing it into a dip. Uh, so what we have to chop is some green onions and some chives. I know they're pretty similar, but the recipe calls for both and it's delicious, so we're gonna go with the recipe. We wanna chop these pretty finely. You don't want them to be super chunky in there. Yeah, so for the cream cheese, you can either leave it sitting out for an hour or two to get to room temperature so it's easier to mix, or if you don't do that, you can just pop it in the microwave for 30 to 45 seconds, depending on your microwave. We just want this to be easier to mix everything together. All right, when the cream cheese is soft, out of the microwave, we're gonna take it over to our scale, put it on the scale and turn it on to tear it. So we want four ounces of our fish here. We had this all minced up together to make it easier to work with. We knew it was all going in a dip, so we didn't really keep any of it uh, together. And if you're over a little bit, that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having more trout. So we got four and a half ounces here. Now we have our other ingredients behind it. We have two Skylands or green onions, two teaspoons of lemon juice, some pepper, just to your taste, a pinch of salt. We also have the uh, chives, and this is more of a garnish. You don't really need to have a measurement, but we just like sprinkling it on top, it looks nice. And then if you find that your trout is not smoky enough, you can cheat, quote unquote, with <laughs> liquid smoke, and this is like incredibly potent. So we definitely say start with like, even like a quarter teaspoon or less, and then taste it, like mix it all in, taste it, and then if it's still not smoky enough, you can add a little more, but very slowly. So let's go ahead and add all this together. So we're gonna dump in the two scallions here, or green onions, it's the same thing. That always confuses me in the grocery store. Let's go ahead and add our two teaspoons of lemon juice. And just like with all recipes, I mean, if you're a little bit off, it's probably not gonna kill anything. And let's crack some pepper into here. And this is just to taste in a pinch of salt. We are using kosher salt. If you want to use like fancy pink Him Himalayan salts or something, and that'll work too. Finally, we don't want to add the, uh, the chives until afterwards because we want them to stay on top. But we do want to get the liquid smoke in there. And we're going to start out, like I said, a little tiny bit, barely a quarter teaspoon. Like, that's not even a quarter teaspoon. We're gonna, we're gonna start with that, that's fine. Very, be conservative with this, because it, it can very easily overpower everything. You just wanna kinda work it all in there. Mix it good. And you can, you can smear it along the side like I'm doing, just to kinda get a look at it and then scoop it off. You know, fold it together. Just make sure it's mixed good. Doesn't have to be fancy. So this looks pretty good. Taste it to make sure it tastes good. That was really good. I don't think it needs any more smoke. It's actually very tasty. 
So we're gonna call this one good. So let's just flatten that out. And for the final garnish, we just take a couple chives, sprinkle them on there. And that's it, that's your dip, all done. Thanks guys for joining me. Thanks for coming along with us on our fishing trip. I hope you like this dip recipe. This is great on bagels, so go buy some nice bagels. Like I'm gonna go out literally today to buy, we have a nice bagel shop nearby. I'm gonna buy some really high quality bagels. That's my favorite way to eat this. Uh, you can put it on crackers. You can thin this out if you want to actually have like a dippable dip. You could put some sour cream in there. Uh, probably about a quarter cup. Maybe do a little less just to see how it's turning out and then just put more in if you need to. But you can make this dippable. Really good on crackers as is. Really good on sandwiches. Just really anything you'd put like cream cheese dip on. This is great. So again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll have this recipe linked below so you can follow it like on a page. So that'd be great. If you like my videos, subscribe, you know, like this. I want to hear your feedback. I want to know if you like this. Thank you guys again. But if you try this, definitely take a picture. I have an Instagram, hashtag PNW Fish and Forage. Just hit me up, you know, tag me in, tag me in your in your in your pictures of your of your trout dip. That'd be great. Let me know what you think and see you next time guys.